If you are in the process of ending a relationship with a narcissist, you've probably noticed that it's very, very common advice to go no contact with the narcissist or as little contact as possible. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the reasons that this is such common advice because I think sometimes we can get confused about why it is we're doing this. And I'm also going to talk about the difference between ignoring the narcissist and going no contact. Welcome to Looking Behind the Mirror, where we explore narcissism and take our lives back as we make sense out of nonsense. As a quick disclaimer, everything I say is based on my opinions and my personal experiences. I'm not a professional, and if you're really struggling, I encourage you to seek professional help. I am providing links below for you. I wanna begin with a personal story of my own. Um, when I was getting out of probably the most traumatizing uh, narcissistic relationship that I went through, I went through this whole go no contact versus ignoring them, blocking them, or just not responding to them. So I know I struggled a lot with even trying to understand why I was doing this. I remember that in the place I arrived, I decided to completely ignore this person, to never respond to any messages, but I chose not to block this person. So I always saw the messages coming in. I always saw all the emails, all the text messages, the voice uh, voicemails, um, this person even mailed letters. So I, I saw all these things, but I chose to just completely ignore them. This person even knocked on my door one night. That was really creepy. Um, and I just didn't answer the door. But um, I did try blocking this person very briefly, but for me personally, this gave me so much, so much anxiety that I decided to unblock them because uh, my reasoning at the time was that I didn't feel safe not knowing how much they were trying to contact me. So if I could see the, the level at which they were harassing me, I at least felt comfortable knowing how bad it was versus blocking them and then just sitting there driving myself crazy wondering like is this person blowing my phone up and I just don't even know it like I just that gave me so much anxiety that I chose to ignore them as opposed to block them now all these years later in hindsight would I would I recommend doing that to somebody else or would I do it the same way um, it's really hard for me to say because I can't really put myself back into that state of anxiety. I can't really put myself back into that emotional tornado that I was trying to work my way out of. But um, I did heal. I did make it through that difficult period of time. And I feel good now. So, I mean, <laughs> it gave me a tiny bit of control or a feeling of control and comfort to be able to at least see how many messages were coming through. So I guess for me, that worked the best, right? But when I look back on that period of time, I think that maybe this sense of control or comfort I had was probably not real because in reality, a narcissist that's going to harass you or you know feel like they own you somehow can be very unpredictable. So it's possible that maybe this person would just not text me or email me or call me or try to get a hold of me. And then they might just show up at my work one day and um, I might actually be in real danger and it might just come out of nowhere. So being able to monitor how much this person is trying to contact me isn't really a way to ensure your safety, even though it kind of made me feel that way. It kind of gave me a false sense of safety. So maybe that was actually something that was helping me manage my anxiety, but wasn't really making me any safer. And another thing to consider is um, to see these text messages come through. Although over time I learned not to read the messages, not to listen to the voicemails, but of course at first I would. And these messages really messed with my head. They really made it difficult to process what I had been through. And some of these messages would really set me back and do me a lot of harm, even if I completely ignored them. 
I wasn't really ignoring them. I just wasn't responding, but I was being affected. I wasn't able to ignore the message if I read it, right? But all this being said, I don't want to add this new element of healing to an already difficult, traumatizing situation if this is what you're doing. Because I know for me, when I would hear people talk about the right way to do no contact, I would, of course, add this uh, needless layer of shame to everything I was trying to do. Like, oh, I'm not doing it right. You know, I'm not doing no contact the right way. And then I would feel bad about myself, which is just really pointless. So I don't want to add to that. I'm not telling anybody the right way, way or the wrong way to do no contact. I'm just going over my experience and what I would recommend and why. And some reasons that you might consider in your own situation and hopefully make the best decision for yourself. When you go no contact or you ignore the attempts at contact, there are two completely different worlds to consider. There's the effect on you and there's the effect that it has on the narcissist. And these two results of the choices you make uh, can get mixed up and blended together and you can start to lose track of the whole point that you're going no contact. So that's a big part of the whole reason I'm making this video. I wanna help you look at the real reasons or the most important reasons, in my opinion, to go no contact. I think a lot of us, when we start off on this journey, I mean, we are really lost in um, rage sometimes, in anger of what has been done to us, and a lot of confusion and shock and um, concepts that we're trying to wrap our head around, like the concept of supply, narcissistic supply. That can be a big reason that we decide to go no contact, because we find out that this person that we thought cared about us, this person that we've been in this important personal relationship with for so long that we trusted, was actually using us for their own supply. They were manipulating us to use our emotional reactions for their benefit with no regard to how much it hurt us, right? So, there is a huge focus sometimes on cutting that off because of the anger and injustice we feel. Like, how dare this person use me for their own ego in ways that hurt me so much? I want to make sure that they don't get any more supply from me because I'm angry, right? And that anger comes from a very, very valid place. So I'm not saying you shouldn't be angry. I completely understand. I mean, I have felt this rage before and this extreme feeling of injustice. And that can easily take over your focus and your purpose and completely crowd out all the other reasons that, in my opinion, you should be going no contact for. If you're focused on cutting off their supply and making sure that they don't have any more uh, narcissistic supply from you, that the way that you act no longer feeds their ego, like, I totally understand that. It makes a lot of sense. But I would ask you to consider the idea that you are more important than them. Your safety, your emotional well-being, your healing is more important than whether or not they're getting supply or how they feel, whether they're having a good day or a bad day. You've been through something extremely traumatic and something that's possibly going to take you a very long time to heal from something that now needs to be about you and, and keeping yourself safe physically, emotionally, and allowing yourself to heal. And whether or not this person gets a charge out of it or uh, finds a way to extract supply from anything you're doing or not doing, I understand that this is easy for me to say, but this shouldn't matter to you at all. I know it will, and that's okay, but you should at least try to remind yourself that it really doesn't matter in the grand scheme of things. You matter. Your emotional healing matters. How you feel, how you move forward and put your life back together matters a thousand times more than whether or not this person is getting narcissistic supply because you can't control that. You can't control the way they feel about the way that you behave, the way you act, the way you react or don't react to them. That should be secondary 
to you doing what's best for you in order to keep yourself safe and heal. So just as a really uh, specific example of what I'm talking about, maybe you've considered changing the locks at your house because they have the key or maybe they used to live there. You're considering changing the locks, but you're worried, wait, if I change the locks at my house, does that mean that they're going to think I'm afraid of them? And is that gonna give them narcissistic supply? Maybe I shouldn't change the locks because I don't want them to get a charge out of that. No, I would always recommend every single time, please change the locks <laughs> of any place they could possibly have the key to. And if that gives their ego a charge, so be it, because your safety comes first. And you know, the, you they are going to find narcissistic supply. That is what they do. If you somehow figure out how to completely cut off all supply you have ever been able to give them and they get nothing from you whatsoever they're going to find it somewhere else you can't stop them from finding supply that's all they're ever going to try to do their whole life you can't stop them from doing that but you can take measures to keep yourself safe so let's talk a little bit about ignoring versus no contact ignoring a narcissist refusing to react to their texts, their voicemails, whatever, is an effective way to minimize the chances that they're going to continue harassing you. Um, nothing can guarantee that they're going to stop harassing you. Some of them will continue trying to harass you for years, possibly. But the less supply they get from you in the form of reaction, or the more you ignore them, um, the more that the time and energy they're spending trying to get a reaction out of you is wasted. And a narcissist is going to want to direct their time and energy towards whatever's going to get them the biggest bang for their buck. The reason that they're going to continue harassing you is because they feel like they own you. They feel like you owe them a response and it, it really bothers them when you start to ignore them because they've lost control over somebody that they used to have control over. And that is really, really hard for them to accept, to deal with. It's very difficult. And that's one reason that they can continue pouring time and energy into trying to get a reaction out of you so that they can feel better about themselves, so that they can prove to themselves that they do still have control over you. But there is uh, there is an end to that in most cases, I would say, you know, there's always an exception, but there is an end to that where they, they start to realize uh, this person's not reacting. I'm wasting my time. I really need to find uh, gratification for my ego somewhere else because I can't live without it. So I need to direct my time and energy somewhere else. And as far as safety goes in this way, ignoring them can be a fairly effective way of keeping yourself safe because if they're never getting any reactions out of you, that cycle that they can start of um, drama that can compound on itself and just turn into a great big spinning ball that gets bigger and bigger, which can sometimes result in very dangerous situations, that ball never gets spinning. It never starts growing if you never react, if you never add any fuel to the fire. So ignoring them is an effective way to increase your chances of remaining safe and increase your chances of them eventually leaving you alone. Neither of which are ever guaranteed, but these are effective ways of increasing your chances of these two things. But no contact isn't really about this. Going no contact is about you. It isn't about teaching the narcissist a lesson. It isn't about convincing them that you're really serious this time. It, it isn't about any effect on them whatsoever. And this can sometimes be confusing or it can be easy to lose track of why you're doing it and start focusing on how it's affecting them. No contact is about you. It's about providing yourself space to heal outside of the confusing, gaslighting world of the narcissist. So when you're ignoring the narcissist, but you're still reading the messages, you're still reading their emails, listening to their voicemails, there's a huge possibility that these messages that are getting through are having a really big effect on your ability 
to to heal and create a space for yourself where you're able to think about what reality is and um, what has actually happened to you and how this person has really treated you. I know for me in the situation that I talked about in the beginning of the video, for the messages that I did read that did get through, they really messed with my head and they would set me back. And I remember it was, it was good that I didn't react to them because that gave me time to think about the messages that were being sent. That gave me space to process these messages. But just the fact that I had to sit and process them was something that I probably didn't need to deal with on top of trying to heal from what had happened to me. So for instance, if I got an email, this actually happened to me as part of this experience I had. If I got an email with a picture that had been taken like a year earlier of a bunch of dirty dishes by the sink with a message that said, this is why our relationship couldn't work out because, you know, look at what a horrible housekeeper you were. And actually in this instance, I think the message was something like, is this really what you want to give up our relationship for? Is this worth losing our relationship for these dirty dishes? <laughs> and I, you know, when I get a message like that, or when I got a message like that, my immediate emotional reaction is first shame, like, oh my gosh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't do the dishes. And if this person was right in front of me showing me this and saying these things, I think it would probably, probably lead to a three hour pointless argument about nothing. But you know, me not responding, not reacting gave me time to process that shame that it triggered and then to realize like, wait, wait, this person was sitting at home doing nothing while I was probably at work. And instead of doing the dishes, he took pictures of the dishes to save for a year so that he could send me this picture and tell me that this is why I kicked him out. <laughs> so I didn't need to see that ever though. I didn't need to open that email. I didn't need to have that story to tell today. I didn't need to spend a couple hours processing how angry that made me after processing how ashamed it made me, right? This just all set my healing back, even though ignoring it and not reacting to it did help and is definitely way, way, way preferable to actually trying to defend myself by responding and arguing and saying everything that I just said to you. But is what I did wrong? Is that the wrong way to go no contact? Or would some people say that that's not no contact at all? I mean, you know, you don't really need to add this layer to your healing either. No contact or ignoring or whatever it is that you need to do to heal to get through this part of your life, I think is a very personal journey for you. You need to figure out the best way that you can do this for yourself. And there really are no hard and fast rules for a right or a wrong way. You know, there's no no contact police out there that are going to come and evaluate the way that you've chosen to do this or what's going to work best for you. You really have every right to decide for yourself what the best way is to move forward. Hopefully taking the lessons I've learned and applying them to the decisions that you make for yourself and separating these two objectives, the effect on the narcissist and the effect on you of the way that you move forward. You can completely ignore somebody, avoid all contact, avoid all engagement, and still check their social media every single day and read their text messages and listen to their voicemails all day long. Or you could also um, end up in a situation where you have to maintain some level of contact, like if you have kids together. And in that situation, you could avoid looking at their social media, reading any text messages that, you know, aren't like mandated or, I mean, I know legally there's probably some things that you have to do, but there are ways of controlling the level of contact. You can make it clear that for communication regarding the kids, you you only will read this email account, emails that come through this email account or whatever. You know, you can set parameters that create boundaries of communication. And even in having minimal communication with this person, you can still avoid all these other things that are going to affect your ability to heal. So my point is you can live in a world where they still feel like they're getting a reaction out of you 
while you are actually controlling the amount of information that's coming through to you. Or you can live in a world where they feel like you're completely ignoring them, but you're actually being very heavily affected by their messages. And you have an enormous amount of control over which of those scenarios or where in between those two scenarios you lie. You can't control them. You can't force them to leave you alone. You can't force them to stop talking about you. You can't force them to feel a certain way. You can't force them to be sorry. You really can't control much of what they do at all, but you can control a lot of what you look at, what you read, what you allow into your mind. And I wanna say again that if you slip up and you look at their social media, like that can affect you negatively uh, badly enough without adding guilt on top of it. So I wanna reiterate that. There is no no contact police, okay? There is no reason to feel ashamed or feel like a failure if you slip up and you, even if you contact them, even if you text them back when they say something obnoxious to you, or you, 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 know, you slip up and you break your own rules. This is your journey. This is for your healing. This is for your benefit. You don't need to make it more difficult for yourself by feeling bad about not doing it perfectly. Goody. And one more thing I want to talk about quickly is when you're in this stage of the relationship or the post end of the relationship, I think a really common mistake a lot of people make is underestimating the danger. The end of an abusive relationship is the most dangerous part of the relationship. I think technically it's when you're trying to leave, you know, when they still have access to you. But after you've gotten free and they don't have control of you anymore, that is a very dangerous time. That's when this person is going to do things and act in ways that you never thought they would ever do. They're going to be someone you've never met. You really can't predict what an abusive person is going to do after they lose control of somebody that they had control over. So change the locks. Don't answer the door. Don't talk to them. Don't engage. If you have an option to have people walk you back and forth to your car at work, do it. Take it seriously. You are not being overly dramatic. When you get out of an abusive relationship, especially somebody who is texting you and calling you all the time, who won't respect your boundaries, they are doing that because they wanna reassert control. It's not because they care about you or because they miss you. When you tell someone to leave you alone or you make it clear that you don't wanna to talk to them and they refuse to leave you alone, that means that they feel like they have a right to do that, which means they feel like they have a right and an entitlement to bother you and to violate your personal boundaries, which means anything goes for them. You don't know where, where their boundaries are. You don't know what lines they aren't going to cross because the things that they're doing and saying right now are probably things that you never envisioned before. So you don't know where those limits are. Don't think, you know, when you happen to see them in a parking lot somewhere that this person is your friend. Or that this person isn't going to harm you. You don't know that. So I think that's even more important than whether or not you're going no contact or whether or not, or not you're ignoring them is that you do not underestimate how potentially dangerous this person can be. And the way that you heal after that is really up to you. So I hope that I gave you some more clarity as to what the purposes of no contact ignoring and protecting yourself really are. This whole journey is about you. You've spent enough time and energy worrying about the narcissist, how they feel, and now you don't need to spend any more time wondering how your behavior is affecting them. It's time to focus on you, your healing, and over time separating yourself from this emotional parasite that's controlled enough of you. Let them be what they are. Let them think what they think. Let them say what they say. Let them try doing all the things that they do for their own endless conquest to forever build up an ego that's constantly crumbling. It isn't your problem anymore. 
I hope this helps. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and comment below any ideas you might have for future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like this video and would like to see more like it in the future. Until next time, thanks. Bye. It looks like Marshall wants to say goodbye before. Whoa. <laughs> yes, you do. Say goodbye. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>